Next in the line we have traction at atavistic epiphysis. What is atavistic? What is atavism? Atavistic epiphysis are those epiphysis which probably are a different bone or a separate bone in lower uh, lower mammals, and then now fused with some other bones and residing with them. Example: coracoid process. So this coracoid process. Coracoid process is a very good example of atavistic epiphysis. It was a different bone. It was a separate bone than a scapula initially in in lower mammals, and then it unites in human and resides with the scapula. So coracoid process is an example of atavistic epiphysis. Os trigonum. Have you heard of this? Os trigonum. Where is this os trigonum? Yes, this os trigonum is present behind the which bone? Talus. We have a posterior tubercle of the calcaneum. I am sorry. We have the posterior tubercle of the calcaneum, which we call as os trigonum. Os trigonum. So this is again an example of atavistic epiphysis. And finally, we have aberrant epiphysis. As the name suggests, aberrant. I mean, we are not expecting an epiphysis in that region, and we still have it. That is the aberrant epiphysis. What is aberrant epiphysis? Where do you find aberrant epiphysis? You find aberrant epiphysis the head of first CMC joint. I'm sure you know what is CMC joint, carpo metacarpal joint. First carpo metacarpal joint. Now, at the head of first carpo metacarpal joint, basically first metacarpal. First metacarpal. Because when you look at a first metacarpal, if you're looking, if let's say this is a first metacarpal over here, the base of first metacarpal is regarded as epiphysis. This is regarded as epiphysis. This is not the epiphysis in the first metacarpal. First metacarpals, all these metacarpals are the example of miniature long bones. We have long bone, short bone, flat bone, pneumatic bones. There are so many kind of bones we have. All these metacarpals and metatarsals are example of miniature long bones, and these miniature long bones they do not have two epiphyses like the these are the these are the normal long bones that we have like radius, humerus, and ulna, in which we have a diaphysis and two epiphyses. Here we have only one epiphysis, and that is close to the base. So if there is an additional epiphysis present toward the head region, that will be aberrant epi. Epiphysis. So, in the example of aberrant epiphysis, epiphysis at the head of first metacarpal, first metacarpal, and epiphysis at the base of rest of the metacarpals because it is other way around in other metacarpals. This was first meta, this was first metacarpal. From second to fifth metacarpal. From second to fifth metacarpal, these are all second to fifth metacarpals. This is epiphysis. This is a normal epiphysis. This is a normal epiphysis. And if you find epiphysis in these region, close to their base, that will be an example of aberrant epiphysis. Is that okay? Okay. Let me repeat the entire thing again. Epiphysis. We have pressure, traction, atavistic, and aberrant. Pressure epiphysis. They are articular epiphysis. They are the articular surfaces of the long bone, head of the humerus, head of the femur, condyles of the tibia. All these are the pressure epiphysis. So whenever you hear this word condyle, I mean the, all the condyles. If you find condyles in the option, it has to be pressure epiphysis. If you find epicondyle in the option, it will be a traction epiphysis. That doesn't mean that apart from epicondyle, we do not have traction epiphysis. All you have to think, the part of a long bone which is not forming the joint and projecting out, like greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, mastoid process. All these projections, they do come under traction epiphysis. Traction, the, the meaning of traction is pull. And then we have atavistic ep epiphysis. The atavistic epiphysis, as I told you, the bone was initially Separate, it joined with the bone which uh, which is over there, and they are residing with them. The example is coracoid process of scapula. Coracoid process was a separate bone in lower animals, 
an ostrigonum of calcaneum. There is a posterior tubercle in the calcaneum, we call it ostrigonum. Aberrant epiphysis, they do appear aberrantly, 